Isn't it exciting to be together again? Together again? Where have you been? I spent most of that last year staying away from people. Don't you remember last year we moved everything online? Mission Impossible. Oh yes, we had these bags of resources with things in. It was fun, wasn't it? It was. We've got lots of fun planned this year too. This year's club is called The Way and we're going to be following Dorothy as she goes on a journey to find the way. Find the way? What way? The way to what? Sounds like you've got lots of questions, Adam. You better be coming on Holiday Bug Club to join us. Do you want to play a game of charades? Sounds great. Oh, okay, so it's a film. See if you can guess at home. It's a film, you ready? It's three words, yeah, okay. First word, we've got two, two, the, 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 okay. Second word, cat, tiger, lion, lion, the, the lion. Quick, the lion king. Did you guys guess it at home? What's up next? Can't wait to find out. Now, we're going to be seeing Dorothy and finding out more about the journey she's going on. Oh, hello everyone. I was in a world of my own. I've come out here for an adventure, but I don't know which way to go. I don't know if I should go this way or that way. Have you got any ideas of which way I could go? Maybe I could find something that could help me. Oh look, here's a sign. I wonder what it says. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. How mysterious and exciting. I wonder what the way is and the truth and the life. And who's the Father they're trying to get to? I think I might need some help to explain this. Oh look, here's my Aunt Em. Hello, Aunt Em. Hello, Dorothy. How lovely to see you. I found this sign. I could really use some help. Who's the I am? And what's the way, the truth, and the life? It is a rather mysterious sign. One well worth pondering on. Hmm. Is Toto going with you? Yes, Toto and I go everywhere. Have you met the father? And what's he like? I have met the father. I know the father. I'll tell you his story, and then you can decide what he's like. But this is going to be a marvelous ad adventure. Really exciting. Really wonderful. Shall we find a seat? Yes. Yeah, let's... Will all your friends be going with you on this journey? Yes, of course. Well then, let's begin the story of the father. L a long time ago, the first people lived in a really beautiful place. Their names were Adam and Eve, and they were created by the Father. This was the most beautiful place you could ever imagine. They needed nothing. They didn't want to go anywhere else because it was so very, very beautiful. And they were so happy, the happiest you could ever be. And do you know what? The Father himself came or would come and they would have conversations. Have you ever had a best, best, bestest friend? Yes, I have. Toto. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's just like that. They were so happy when the father came. When they were placed in this beautiful place and the father had specially prepared it for them, he told them one thing. They had only one rule. And that one rule was that you must not eat the fruit of that tree. Now, the tree that the father was talking about was in the middle of the garden, and it was one of two trees. He told them it was really bad. You should not eat that, you know, the fruit of that tree. And they continued in the garden where they lived. It was called Eden, and they continued to enjoy everything. But do you know what happened? They disobeyed God, the Father. They disobeyed the Father. Can you imagine the tempter coming and saying, Come on, eat of the fruit. And he came to Eve first. And you can imagine Eve going. And she ate of the fruit. 
And then she thought, this is a good fruit. And she gave some to her husband, Adam. And he had some too. And then something horrible happened. They realized that they were naked. And they were so ashamed of themselves. So very ashamed of themselves. And so very sorry for what they had done. You can't begin to imagine. And everything suddenly changed. And then God came, and God is the Father, and He came, and He called for them. And for a while they didn't answer. And then He called again, and Adam answered and said, we're here. And the Father said, what's happened? And He said, we're ashamed because we're naked. And the Father said, how did you know you're naked? You ate of the tree, didn't you? The father knew right away that they had, they had broken the one rule that they had. One rule. Can you imagine that? Think of all the rules you have to obey. And they had just this one rule. And they broke it. And because they broke it, they had to leave that beautiful place. They went, they, they went to a new place that was harsh and hard and horrible. They had to work hard just to put food on the table. The ground was hard and barren and full of thorns and thistles. And they worked from morning to evening just so they could put food on the table. And they became tired and exhausted and irritable and hungry. And their tempers flared and they became jealous and they were angry all the time. And they started to quarrel and fight. And then they started to kill each other. And it was a horrible time. A horrible time. Oh, but the father knew that this would happen because he knows everything. He knows everything. And the father knew this would happen. So he had a plan prepared. Because you see, those who ate of that fruit would die. But God loved them. He didn't want them to die. He wanted them to live with him forever. To be with him forever. And he had prepared this plan that would ensure that they did not have to die eternally. And so he thought he would send somebody to pay the price for that disobedience. You know, in the court of law, if you steal something, you sometimes go to jail. Well, it's sort of like the same thing. Because they had broken the rule, you needed to pay the price, the penalty, for that uh, breaking of that rule. Uh, but they didn't have the ability to make recompense for breaking the rule. And so God prepared someone to be their substitute, someone who would pay the price of their disobedience. And when the time was right, that person came. But before that person came, God sent messengers because he was so sorry for his people. He loved them so much. And even though, even though they had disappointed him, he still loved them and he still wanted to help them. And he sent other people um, with his message of how to live, how to live together in harmony, and how to be happy, and so on. But did they listen to him? They wouldn't listen to him. A few did listen, but some it was just as though they had their fingers in their ears. They would not listen. And because they would not listen, they continued in this horrible life that they had, where they were unhappy and miserable, and where they hated each other, and where they were touchy, and um, eventually, the father thought he would send his only son to bring this message. And he came about 2,000 years ago. Nobody would think that he was as powerful as he was, that he was a child of the father. Because you see, he was born in an, angel, in an animal manger. Fancy that. The son of this powerful father who can do all things being born in an in a animal manger to a poor girl, mind you, that poor girl was descended from royalty. But at the time, she was a poor girl. She was young. And there she was having this baby alone without even her mother there. Fancy that. Not even her mother to help her. Just her husband having this baby in an animal manger. And so the father's son came 
But he came with a specific purpose. He came to die. Because you see, when he died, he would pay the price of the death we should have had when we ate the food. You understand that or is that a bit too complicated? No, I understand. Yeah, because when well, you remember when you ate that fruit, you would die? Yes. Yes, so that's what was ha he, what happened to him. But before that, he spent about three years from the time he was 30 until he was 33. And he spent that time teaching people the way the father wanted them to live. Now, I'll tell you a secret and you mustn't tell anybody. 30 is a really significant age. You're not 30 yet, are you? No. Yeah, you have some way to go. At 30 years old, you became a priest in the place where the son was born. So at 30, he began to act like a priest. He wasn't a priest in the temple, but he did all the duties and all the functions and all the roles of a priest. He taught people how to live. He healed the sick. Fancy that. Fancy that, the coronavirus. Mm. He healed the sick. Those who were lame, he made them stand up straight. <laughs> Truly, he turned water into wine. Don't tell anybody that one. But he did turn water into wine. Those who were blind, they didn't need glasses anymore. They could see. And those who couldn't hear, he opened the, their ears so they could hear everything. And the greatest thing of all, he raised people from the dead. There was a little girl, um, a, a little bit less younger than you. And she was dead and he raised her to life. Fancy that. And he raised a young man, a little bit older than you, to life. So he could also raise the dead. Because you see, the son was powerful. As powerful and as strong as the father was. And he could do anything. Now, people could not put him to death. But he allowed himself to be killed because he wanted to save people from, from the penalty of what they had done. And so he died, but three days after, his father, who could do stuff like this, raised him to life again. And loads and loads of people saw him. And why did you think the father did all of this? I don't know. Because he loves us? Because he loves people? We are like that? We sometimes have bad things in our hearts, hard hearts. Sometimes we don't have a heart. And God does not like that. The Father loves us. He wants us to be happy and he wants to be friends with us. Um, there's a big word we talk about fellowship. He wanted to be chummy, you know, chummy so we could be friends again. And the only way he could do that is by taking away the sin that was between us. The penalty for our disobedience. So what do you think of the father? Do you think he's a good and kind and loving father? I do. Thank you, Anem. Father does sound very kind and very loving. Yeah. And you know the best thing about this story, Dorothy? It's not a made-up story. It's not a made-up story. It's really very true. And it's in the Bible. And you can be a part of this story. You can be one of those who become the, the, the child of the father. And I think that's what that message is about. You see that I am? Yeah. That was Jesus. That was Jesus. That was God's son. And he was giving you a message. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. I can't come to your house unless you take me, can you? No. You can't go to the Father. Except the sun takes Wow. Yeah. It's an exciting adventure. You're going to enjoy it. I can tell you that. Tell your friends that too. And take them along with you. I will. It's wonderful. It was lovely to see you. Are you ready to go? What an amazing story. I can't wait to find out what happens next on Dorothy's adventure. We'll be meeting Dorothy later every day this week as she goes on a journey to find out more about the way, the truth and the life and how to get to the father. Great, what's happening next? Next, we're going to see Joe and the musical munchkins for some worship. I'm ready to go. Well, 
But you won't get to heaven on the back of a camel And you won't get to heaven on a sheep man No, you won't get to heaven on a double-decker bus And you won't get to heaven in a jeep A pogo stick will make you feel sick And you can't drive there in a car Oh, a rocket in a pocket might make you see stars But it sure won't get you that far It's only one way Jumping from a plane or by wrapping your arms real quick. A flight or a kite or an elastic band might whisk you through the air. Or you could scuttle in a shuttle right over the moon, but it still won't get you there. It's only one way, one way, one way. One way. You can get to heaven, no, oh yeah. It's only one way, one way, one way. One way. That's for God's sake. You won't get to heaven by saying you're a Christian And you won't get to heaven cause you're good You won't get to heaven just by going to a church So many, many think you could A mom or a dad or a sister who loves Jesus Won't get you there, it's true Oh, you're in favour with the Saviour But this you gotta know You need to find him just for you Only one way One way Jesus, He's the only way. One more time, there's only one way. Oh, there's only one way. One way. One way. One way. You can get to heaven, no, oh, yeah. There's only one way. One way. One way. One way. One way. And that's through God's Son, Jesus. He's the only way. to Holiday Bible Club, you'll know this song. We're going to sing it together. I was nowhere you came to my rest. From the grave I've been raised. When I needed a saviour to save me, Jesus, you made a way. I was blind but these eyes have been opened. Now I walk in the light. Every step on this road I will follow Jesus, you made a way Cause you are the way And you are the way Lost and dead but your love came to find me Jesus, you are the way And you are the way Darkness, Jesus, you are the way. Oh, Jesus, the only way. All my days are secure in your promise. All my days are secure in your promise. Never standing alone. You're the truth, you're the life, you're my future. Jesus, you made it. I'm alive. I'm alive in the love that you give me. I'm free to dance once again. You will lead me from glory to glory. You are the way, and you are the way. Lost and dead, but your love came to find me, Jesus. You are the way, and you are the way, and you are the way. You're the last 
shining bright in the darkness, Jesus, you are the way. Oh, and Jesus, the only way. Oh God. Dorothy, you are happy today. Well, of course I am. I'm off on the journey. It's like travelling down the yellow brick road, but better. I'm off to meet the Wiz. I mean, that's what I call him. The Bible calls him God. Oh, Aunt Annie, you tell me all about the Father, and I'm really excited to meet him. And so you should be. He's well worth joining to meet. But aren't you missing someone? Who could I be missing? Your faithful four-legged companion. Of course, Toto. How could I forget Toto? Toto, come here. Good boy. Mm. Hello. <laughs> what a lovely dog. What so sort of a dog is he? This is Toto. He is a Jack Russell. He's eight years old and he likes barking at squirrels and sitting <laughs> on your lap. Well, I hope you've got some energy because we're going on a long journey today. Thank you. As you journey, Dorothy, just one thing. Beware of the apple trees. Good luck. It's going to be a really exciting journey for you. Bye. Beware of the apple trees. Okay. Okay, thanks Aunt Em. Beware the apple trees. Okay. Well, I've got everything I need. I've got Toto. I've got the sign in here. I think I'm ready. Oh no, look, the apple trees. Oh, oh no. Ah! Toto, no! Ah! I hope Dorothy gets Toto back. Yes, me too. And hopefully we'll see you all later down at the church for some more fun. And we look forward to joining you tomorrow as you join Dorothy on her adventure to find the way, the truth and the life. Will you be going? I hope so. I hope we'll see you tomorrow and later on. Bye! Bye.